Praise the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, the ruler of the universe. Lord, we exalt you. We lift you up and we put you at the highest place this morning because you are God and your mercies endure forever. You are almighty. There's none compared to you. You are worthy of our praises this morning. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your courts and to study your word. And as we get into your word, Lord, we ask for your divine leading, your direction, your presence. We pray for divine illumination as we read your word, as we study your word. Lord God, some of these scriptures, we have read them over and over and over again. But I pray for new insight this morning. I pray, Lord God, for a conviction of heart in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for a personal examination, a comparison of where we are and where you want us to be in the name of Jesus. So, Lord God, touch the minds, touch the eyes of your people. And I pray, Lord God, that what will be said and done will be done to your honor and glory. Lord God, take full control of my entire being right now. I place myself in your hands because I am nothing. I am a frail creature. I'm just a vessel, Lord, to be used by you. So lead and direct, mighty God. Clear the atmosphere. Lord, let your Holy Spirit dwell among us. Let nothing be done for vain glory. Let nothing be done, almighty God, to glorify any, anybody else or anything else. But Lord God, you get all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. First, let me greet our host pastor, Pastor Ashley Morgan, and his wife, Minister Wright, and his family, Deaconesses, deacons, evangelists, missionaries, all officers in the courts and online. Greetings. Greetings to you members. Greetings to those online and um, visitors and friends. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is always a pleasure to be your teacher. And as I teach, or as I prepare, I'm a student um, as well. So as we go through together, I have a dual role to be a teacher and also a student. To hear from you, to hear from the Lord, what it is that he would have us to know, to be better. And we are on the quarterly, the fruit of the spirit, evidence of change. And over the past two weeks, we have looked at the impact of the Holy Spirit, the impact that the Holy Spirit has on um, others, the power of the Holy Spirit in doing miracles and so on. And we've also looked at the impact of the Holy Spirit on us. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, what impact does it have on us? Praise the name of the Lord. But Today, we are going to look at the fruit of the Spirit, the first fruit, or the fruit, first aspect of the fruit of the Spirit, right? So we're going to emphasize the importance of love as the fruit of the Spirit. And you know, as a biologist, when I say fruit, my mind gone to the natural fruit, and how it is that a natural fruit develops. And we know different types of fruit, right? Orange. Ake. Do we know that gungo peas is a, is a fruit? Biologically, gungo is a fruit. 
ta um, tomato biologically is a fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So I prepared a little slide. Um, you have it, Brother Cadio? No, he's not. He's not. Okay. All right. Fine. So I don't have the, the slide to, so you have to just listen to what I have to say. So biologically, follow me now. It's just an analogy. So you can get it. A fruit is the fertilized ovary of a flower. So when you think, when you look at, say, a fruit tree, like a tree, when it's in blossom, all those blossoms are actually flowers, right? And if you were to examine the flower very closely and you knew the, all the parts, there's actually a male part and a female part. The female part is buried deep within the flower. The male part has things called pollen, and I'm sure we know about pollen. Sometimes we brush up against some flowers and it's some little dust. Looks like some little dust particles come off on your clothes. Those are the male parts, and those will be similar to what the male, the human male has as sperm. So, right? So it has the genetic material, right, that the male part of the flower has. And then deep within inside the flower, is the ovary. So just like how women have ovaries, flowers have an ovary with many different ovules. In the case of the female, it is eggs. Okay? Normally though, the male part of one flower doesn't fertilize the female part of that same flower. The pollen has to be transferred to another flower. And we know by what means some, sometimes this happens, by insects. So we know we see usually when um, a, a tree gets in blossom, you have a whole lot of bees, for example, that come around and um, go from flower to flower because the flower also has food. But it has a dual role. When the bee lands on that flower, the pollen sticks to its body. Not that it necessarily knows that that is what is happening. But just as when we brush against the, the flower, some of the pollen brushes off on us. The bee also collects some of the pollen from that flower. And then when it lands on another flower, it deposits those pollen on the female part. Now, God is so good. Remember I said that the ovary is deep within the flower. When the pollen lands on the top of the female part of the flower... It actually grows down and merges with the ovules or the eggs in that flower. And that be now becomes a seed. And that entire part, whatever is remaining around the ovary, now becomes the fruit. So the petals fall off and the, the sepals, the green part around the flower, and that inside part grows and grows and becomes what we see as the aki, what we see as the pear, what we see as the, as the orange and the, and the tangerine and all of that. Okay? Now, some ovaries only have one ovule. So, the fruit that develops only has one seed. Tell me a, a fruit that you know that only has one seed. Mango, pear, our OTT apple, right? Good. Some ovules have multiple um, ovules, and so they produce multiple seeds. Like which fruit? Orange, aki, gungu peas, guava, melon, right? Okay. Now listen to this part now. If none of the ovules in the, in the flower becomes fertilized by the pollen, no fruit develops. Praise the name of Jesus. If no pollen fertilizes any of the ovules, no fruit develops. So the flower degenerates and dies, the ovary dies. All right? Let us now take it to the spiritual. Sorry, yes. Not necessarily. So remember that when um, you have a, a, a tree, like a mango tree that has a lot of blossoms, 
not meaning not all of those flowers will develop into a fruit. So some flowers will develop, some may not. Some just fall off. Some will develop. There are on that same tree. However, there are some, as you rightly said, they may have flowers, but they never develop fruits ever. Right? And I mean, we're going, that, we can, that can take us into another depth of what flowers are, because you have different, some flowers that are only male, some flowers that are only female. And so if you're, if you're unfortunate enough to have a plant that only produces like male parts, then you may never get a fruit. Okay? So, I, you know, so genetics and thing. All right, but let's focus on um, the ones that produce, okay? Um, so, bringing it to the spiritual now, us, we are that flower. We have that with an ovary and ovules or an ovule. We have the potential to develop and foster the development of the fruit of the spirit. However, we need the pollen. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us and or to lead us. So even though you may not be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you can be led by the Holy Spirit. All right? The Holy Ghost must be there for the fruit to develop. So don't become a bastard tree. As I, as I say that now, I remember when Jesus was walking along the way and he saw the fig tree flourishing leaves and that is a sign that is Big time. We baptize in Jesus' name. You dress like Christian. You do everything that should be done. However, meaning just the temporal. But there's no fruit. There's no evidence. When, you're, when you start talking, when you start behaving in a particular way, nobody can say that you are a Christian. Something is wrong with that. You're not being led by, it's not that the Holy Spirit is not there. You're not taking heed. You're not yielding yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You're walking in the flesh. Bless the name of Jesus. So, it is important to note, it is the fruit. One fruit developed from the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is as a result of the presence of the Spirit of God that these, this one fruit develops with nine parts. So think of a tangerine. One fruit, but have different pegs, as we say, right? Love, joy, peace, forbearance or long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Note that fruit have seeds. That when planted, they grow. So whatever characteristics you foster, whatever spirit you're fostering and nurturing within you, it has an impact on people around you. So if you love, love is going to be shared. If you hate, that is what you're going to be sharing. So be careful what it is you allow in your spirit. Because that is what you're going to nurture and you're going to spread. All right? Now, the natural fruit has several characteristics and we can also align them with the spiritual fruit. Fruit isn't achieved by working. It is birthed by abiding. So it is the Holy Spirit that comes and then now you follow as he leads. Fruit is fragile. So especially think about like a to tomato. When you go to the market and buy a tomato, you don't put it at the bottom of the bag. Sometimes you have to just hold it separately. And then you put it on top gently. Fruit has a tendency to, so you have to nurture. So when you're developing or allowing the Holy Spirit to nurture and develop those aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, nurture it. 
Because you know what? It is not our natural tendency to exhibit these characteristics. We are selfish. We want to do our own thing. And so it's important that we just um, care for it. Fruit reproduces itself. So as I was saying before, when we foster certain things, when we foster the fruit of the spirit, it is contagious or it affects or it impacts others. And if we foster, say, love, we'll see how when we foster love, the other fruit of the spirit come after. All right? Fruit is attractive. So there's nothing nicer than you walking along and you see a nice mango tree. And you see the pretty yellow. East Indian, of course. Right? But, you know, other persons may say, well, whatever um, type. But it, there's nothing nicer than you walking along and you see a nice fleshy tree. And you see the beautiful mango or apples. And, you know, so it's, you know our apples sometimes when they get dark red, you say, that one's sweet, man. And that is when people start coming red in your tree, right? Fruit, so your fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, should attract people to you. It is through the Holy Spirit, through the fruit of the Spirit, many times that we exhibit the love of God, that people know that God exists and are drawn to Christ. Fruit nourishes, right? So fruit um, or fruits, the natural fruits contain vitamins and minerals. Praise the name of the Lord. Fruits have um, fiber, so to flush you out. So when you foster the fruit of the spirit, the works of the flesh should go. Bless the name of Jesus. All right. So then, let us look at the first aspect of the fruit. We're at lesson three, which is love. Brethren, we talk about love every day, every week. It is a hot topic. It is a tender topic. And you know what I find? That we often say, you know, say, I don't feel love or this church not have no love. Meaning, we look outward. And point the blame and say, them your church people, not, them your church people, not sure no love, you know. But you know what? In going through this lesson, what I find, if we want to see love in this church, it starts with me. The word of God says, God is love. God, it never said God sought love from. God is love. Any characteristic you want to see in anybody else, be that character or exhibit that character. And you'll be surprised how infectious it is. You'll be surprised how tolerant you can be because you're not expecting everybody else to be. You, me. We'll decide, and we're going to look at that, that love is a decision. I am going to decide to love, no matter what. So today, I don't want anybody to be looking around. Look within today. Love is a topic that we go over and over, but today I encourage you, take a deeper look at these scriptures. It's scriptures that we know, some of them we can repeat. Wake up in the night and you know it. But today, I encourage us all to take another look. Take it personal today. It's not about anybody else. It's about me today. All right. So, love translates the ancient Greek word agape. So, the love that we're talking about today is agape love. In that language, there are four distinct words for love. You have eros, which, was, which is the word for romantic or passionate love. So that is the love between husband and wife. We're not talking about that one today. Filial love, which is the word for love, um, as we talked about 
friends, brethren, right? We're not really talking about that one today because that one is kind of conditional too. So if you are my friend, I'm your friend, I'm going to treat you right if you are my friend. There is storge, love, which is the word that shows, it's a, in, in, shows itself in affection and care, especially for family members, right? So the love that you share with your parents or for your parents, for your children, for your aunt, your uncle, and so on. Again, that is kind of conditional because your family, you got to love them anyway, right? Even when them, you know. So conditional, but agape describes a different kind of love. It is a love more of decision than of the spontaneous heart. So it's not the flutter, flutter in your heart and you feel like, you feel nice towards somebody and you're going to help them out because you have this feeling. As much a matter of the mind than the flutter, flutter heart because it chooses to love the undeserving. Agape has to do with the mind. It is not simply an emotion which rises unbidden in our hearts. It is a principle by which we deliberately live. And if it is that agape is towards the undeserving, then obviously you have to make up your mind. Some people in our mind don't deserve our love. They don't deserve our kindness. They don't deserve our help because they hurt me. They're not nice. And so in our estimation, we just go write them off. We just go sidestep them. But today, we are required to love as God loves. Unconditionally. To the undeserving. Bless the name of the Lord. And so obviously we can't do that within ourselves, through our own strength. It's going to take that pollen grain. We land on our hearts. And grow down. Settle in. Merge with our spirit and us yielding to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's going to take the word of God over and over reading it, meditating on it, and deciding that I am going to love this person. Or I'm going to love because God loved me. Because I am of God. Because I mean to be different. Because I mean to be an example for others to follow. All right? The scripture reading is from 1 John 4, 7 to 21. It was read earlier. And we're going to be looking at different aspects of it in the questions. So I'm not going to go into it really. Just two things I want to highlight because they don't necessarily come out in the questions. The first verse, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Now I want, it, I want us to look at the New Living Translation. Or listen to the, that verse. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. What does that mean? You did love yesterday. And today, you still have love. And when tomorrow comes. Still go love. And when them hurt you, what? Still go love. And even when them not say thank you. And even when you're still going continue. That's what the word of God is saying to us today. Continue in love. Verse, go down to verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. New Living Translation, such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. No. 
when we start talking about love and we're saying it's unconditional and we must continue in love, I know some people in their minds, you lucky it, sister Tamara. You know them hurt me? I'm not going to put myself out there again. For me, they hurt me. You know what that is? You're rooted in fear. Your actions are rooted in fear. But today we are learning that. You see this agape love here, so? There's no space for fear. Because perfect love. Ex so if we are fearful of putting ourselves out there, sharing love, we need to go back to Jesus. Because his love is not perfected in us. We need to also look at our motives. Are we loving so that we can get the attention? Praise the name. I see the hands coming up. I see deacon. I see minister. I see brother Nikoi. In that order, just come up. You know what I think we need to do? And it's coming up in the lesson. One. We have to look at people as a soul that needs to be saved. So you can't treat them any and any way. Two, if your love is ultimately, initially for God, then what you're going to be doing is as service to God. Amen. So regardless of how you react, whether you tell me thanks, yes or no, whether you hurt me, yes or no, my motivation is that I am a child of God and I'm going to do what God says. I'm going to be his daughter and I'm going to exhibit the characteristics that he said I should have. Yes, Deacon. Praise the Lord, teacher. Praise the Lord, pastor Praise and Lord. brethren. <laughs> this love that we have to have, teacher. Let, let me tell you something. It has to be from God himself. It has to be from God himself. Okay, can I tell you this? I will tell my wife that I love her. But yet still if I see somebody else, I'm going to love that. Eh? Eh? That's coming from your mouth. Yeah, right? So, so, we have to have, so we have to have that love from God that when we see that other person, we don't love that person more than how we love my wife. You see, we have to have that love. And the Holy Ghost has to nurture that love within us. So if we don't have it, we don't. Right. So, although we're not talking about the Eros love, but the principle of what he's saying is that if the love of God really dwells within us, then we're not going to hurt the people who we say we love. We're not going to do anything to make them feel embarrassed. We're not going to be rude to them. Praise the name of the Lord. I say, I love you, brethren. I love you, Minister Wright. <laughs> and then, me turn around and me cut my eye. I may talk all sorts of things about Minister Wright behind his back. What kind of love is that? No love any at all. Bless the name of Jesus. Come, Minister. Bless the Lord. Bless the, the name of Jesus. All right, so the question that's from the first, the verse that you read first, John 4 and 7, said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. But I want to go to it, that he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So you're saying to me that if I act, if act like I love you and I don't love you, I'm not of God. Even though I'm baptized. Even though I'm baptized and I say that I'm a Christian, but I don't love. That means that God still don't dwell within me. Even though I come to church every Sabbath. Even though I come to church every Sabbath. Even I mean, though I may, I'm an usher and I'm picking on the ushers. <laughs> even though I teach the word. Even though I'm a minister. Even though you're a minister. But if I don't love you. And the agape I love that we talk about. I am not of God. Unconditional. So even if you hurt me, I still have to love you. Because Boy. God that dwells within me will hurt him so much, you know. Look at, look at that. But yet still him love with. Yes. 
So that, that is the love it requires. To, and once God is inside of you, it's not a spirit taking thing anymore. Praise the Lord. Come, Brother Nikoi. Thank you, Minister. Bless the Lord, everybody. I really want to concur with what has been said. You know, um, the love, this love that we're talking about, it really takes something else. And really looking at it, I can really understand that it really is a fruit of the Spirit. It has to be you naturally loving somebody when them, we, we deal with practicality. A man go out there, take a nine-year-old, your daughter, rape her, chop off her neck, and all them something there, and you still... I'm hungry, have I have to go feed him. If you and have that love that person. In the midst of when them do all of that, and you have to turn around and love that person. Nothing natural, no in that. Definitely. It has to be the spirit of God. Yes. The spirit. Leading you and us. Which is and why being it's led by. Yes. My God. I, 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 I remember this story, and I've shared it with you before. There was um, a period, I think, in Africa. Um, I'm trying to remember this, the, the country. They had some um, internal conflict. So, like, one tribe or set of people were um, fighting against the other, killing other people. And a young man went in, chop up, and it's machete, that is their favorite tool. Chop up the lady's son, chop off her hand. Right? And somehow, you know, the, the time passed and the, that boy was in need. I think he went to prison or whatever, and when he came out, he didn't have nowhere to live. But I don't know how it happened that this boy ended up in her circle. And she took him in to her house. Fed him. Taught him the word of God. Led him to Christ. Save. That is the Holy Spirit. Bless the name of Jesus. Because honestly, brethren, is one son I have two children. One son and one daughter. And I'm telling you, I would, me would I forgive him from afar. Naturally, like me, Tamara, standing up here talking to you right now. Naturally. Me would I forgive him. Because I know that I need to forgive my enemies. Me I forgive you from afar. Yes, me forgive you over. You stay right. Over. I don't want to see you because every time I see you, I'm going to remember my son. So I cannot imagine what that lady would have gone through. It must be the Holy Spirit. It must be the pollen green, land panner, grow down in our spirit and germinate and become a seed and now spread to somebody else, impacting their life so that they can be saved. It must be God. Naturally, mother won't kill him. Naturally, me want him hang him by. But God. And sometimes we, we go through some things sometimes, you know, and we are surprised how we behave. Sometimes God really restrain us and constrain us. You know, we know that we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit because naturally. That's not what we would do. And some simple things too. And some simple things, we disgrace God. We don't experience nothing like that lady. And we write off people. We don't use that opportunity to tell somebody, to demonstrate to somebody that, you know, say you're a senior, but God 
loves you. I mean, I'm going to show you, say, God is love. By showing you contrary or treating you the opposite of how you treat me. This is a serious thing. I'm going to say it's easy, brethren. But today we have to make up our mind. Come, um, Sister Ballinger, we have to make up our minds. Because we can't let our feelings and our what we want to hinder us from making it into the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Bless the Lord. Happy Sabbath. As the teacher men, mentioned that um, my experience that before I got saved, that I believe that is how God want me to believe in him for him to call me. When the man come in to kill me, I never make a alarm because God was there with me. And after God let me say what I have to say and he run. Person was in the house with God and I never make a alarm. And afterward I knocked the door and I say someone was in the house when they went and see where he walk in. They say, of course, someone was in. And I was praying because it, it take me a good while to knock the door. And I said, Lord, let you run because he never hurts me. He never come to do what he have to do. And I, I say within myself, probably that's the person going to preach to me later on. So I say it, but I want him to run. And my taking is this, that the lesson is going on and it reached us this far. But I am saying to us in the church that we take a little bit of not to eat and we take a little too to continue love. I have my experience and my experience, I have to make sure that love is in my heart to love. Because, Lisa, you see, if God never inside of me, <laughs> maybe I will not be here today. But because God show me love and I say that love is of the kingdom and I'm going there. So I have to show person which do not love me, love. And believe you me, nothing's happen here and I experience it. But I am saying today, this is for the church of God. It's not speaking to people out there. If you are in the church as a sinner, it's speaking to you too. That lesser, the lesser is talking about love. And we have to love as all God wants us to love. Because my experience is not too good here. But after all, I have to love. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Okay, we're going to... Yes, sir. Yes, before you move on, um, yes, Sister Tammy, there is a question from YouTube. I'd like you to address it. And the question is this. Should not all the, the titles of love be under one umbrella when the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you? That is to say, Eros and Agape and Philionia. The person is asking, yes. I would say yes, because if it is that the Holy Spirit is leading you, then you're going to love your husband and your wife or your wife um, unconditionally. So it is not just about the passionate part, but you're going to love them as a person, as a person with a soul. Praise the name of the Lord. And so if it is that there is some misunderstanding or hurt, then you should be able to work it out. Praise the name of the Lord. If it is that you have the love of God in you, then you are going to love your brother. Praise the name of the Lord. Unconditionally. Be patient with them. If it is that you love, the love of God is in you, you're going to love your family members, even if they hurt you and so on. So this agape love does cover the others. Praise the name of the Lord, because as we said, it is unconditional. It is to the undeserving. It is to the deserving. It covers everything. Yes. All right. All right. So let us go into the introduction. Introduction. Love is important to God. 
Perhaps this is why love is first in the list of the fruit of the Spirit. God commands his people to love, to love him, Deuteronomy 6, 5, to love one another, 1 John 4, 7, and to even love our enemies, Matthew 5, 44. Jesus said that the love we have for one another would identify us as his disciples, John 13, 35. All the other facets or qualities of the fruit of the Spirit are rooted in love. Love is not simply warm feelings. Instead, it is an attitude that demonstrates itself in action. This kind of love is not the natural human response. It can be manifested only through an encounter with the love of God. People will notice our love and know that we are supernaturally empowered. Loving in the context of God's word allow us to reach up to God and to reach out to others. John speaks of the parallel Christian, the parallel. Christians must recognize in our love being expressed upward to God and outward to others. The facet is that we cannot say we love God if we do not love one another. 1 John 5, 2-3. There are a few principles that can help us understand agape love. One, love is an act of will. Each aspect of the fruit of the Spirit requires decisions. Love is no different. The kind of love that Jesus models requires deliberate decisions and conscious effort. It takes work to love. But it is the love of God in us that will enable us to love him. Two, love is action. It is not just words, but something we do. Actions speak louder than words. Backing up our words is proof of our love. 1 John 3, 18. Love reaches out to the unlovely. If you love only those who love you, what makes you any different than sinners? Luke 6, 32 to 33. We need God's help to love. It is not in our nature to love like God loves. That's why we need to mature in the fruit of the Spirit. Love expects nothing in return. Luke 6.35 If we are to love as God loves, we find that we need to love without any thought of personal return. Love is self-sacrifice. Here are some practical ways to love others as Jesus loves us. One, Helping when it is not convenient. Two, giving when it hurts. Three, devoting energy to others' welfare rather than our own. Four, absorbing hurts from others without complaining or fighting back. True forgiveness. Bless the name of the Lord. <laughs> we can stop the lesson right there, right? Because basically all that is said in the introduction is what's coming out in the lesson questions. All right? So I'm not going to dwell on it. Just a few things. First paragraph. Love is important to God. And uh, perhaps this is why love is the first in the list of the fruit of the Spirit. So in essence, Paul could have just stopped right there. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Because if you love, you're going to have peace with God. So if you love God, right, you're going to have peace with him. Peace with others. There are certain things that you will override and it's not going to bother you. Joy. Again, if you love God, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise the name of Jesus. If it is that we have love, we are going to have long suffering. We're going to put up with some things that we wouldn't normally put up with. Not so. True, true. Um, all of the others. Praise the name of Jesus. We will be gentle with people. We will be kind if we love them. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what we're saying is that if we, if we just foster love, all the others should come or fall into place. It's going to impact our, um, our actions toward others. Okay? The next paragraph. 
Second sentence. Love is not simply warm feelings. Third sentence. Lo um, love is not simply warm feelings. He said it is an attitude that demonstrates itself in action. This kind of love is not the natural human response. And we've been saying that from morning. So attitude, meaning is a mindset. You have a makeup in your mind that you're going to love. It is a decision that is demonstrated. So you're not just going to say it in your mind. You know some love, my brethren. And then your actions are contrary to that. It must be seen. As a matter of fact, don't tell me that you love me. Show me. Because everybody can talk. And in this world, people love everything. People love chocolate. You know what I'm saying? People love certain type of shoes. People love clothes. But it's not the same love we're talking about. The unconditional. Where me see you drop down and I'm going to help you up. Even though I am about my business. Sacrificing my time for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, so our natural ten tendency is to be selfish. To take revenge. And we might say, boy, me now, me now go hurt him back, but me now help him. Me forgive him, but me I go walk wide. Me I go forgive him from afar. That is not the love of God. And so, again, we have to reiterate, it takes God to do that. It takes a surrendering of our will because our will is to serve ourselves, to preserve ourselves, to put our heart in a little box and make sure that that not happen to me again. Nobody not take me for idiot. That is our natural tendency. But if we really understood the love of God, the love that God has for us, that in spite of our sinful condition, when we deserve to die, he gave his only begotten son. My one son. Again, I one son may have, but may have two children. I mean, a team would have sacrificed one of them for anybody. And God have one son. Sinless, abiding in heaven, come down on earth, dwell among us, beaten, spat upon, ridiculed, hung on a cross that was reserved for the worst sinner or the worst criminal. Praise the name of the Lord. For not only the people of that day, but for people in 2024 and beyond until he comes. Praise the name of Jesus. So then, what excuse do I have not to love? What can I tell God? God them did hurt me. God could have said, but you hurt me too. But me forgive them and... They I forgive you enough time and still you go back and do the same thing. Pray. But them not even tell me thanks. How many times has God blessed you? And you just gone off. You know, remember to say, Lord, I give you thanks. Or your attitude is not that of gratitude. God, forget me. How many I have this and that? Bless the name of Jesus. The next point, just to highlight the principles, a few principles that can help us understand agape love. Love is an act of will, which we talked about already. It's a decision. So even when we don't feel like doing it, we have to. Love is action, so it must be seen. Love reaches out to the unlovely, so we need the spirit of God because... To love somebody that is not nice, 
that is not your friend, that takes the power of God. We need God's help to love, as we said that. Love expects nothing in return. So you're not going, although you don't really like them, you're going love them or help them because you know that they are the, the manager of our BNS and you're going to need a loan later down the line. Or, you know, say, I got a friend of Clever and come a car, you need for service, you know. So I want a discount um, later on, right? I'm a know um, evangelist, Martin, she work at the tax office. I'm going to have my tax, my, 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 my thing for go deal with. So I got a friend of mine. Anything, anything you want, evangelist? I love you. But the moment I cannot benefit from you, the love done. We choose who we want to love. But the agape love is not like that at all. If you are able to love somebody without even considering how they're going to give you back or pay you back, that is love. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Love is self-sacrifice. So it's going to hurt. It is not convenient at times. It is devoting your energy for others' welfare. It is absorbing hurts from others without complaining. I mean, I said, Lord, really? So I can't even complain about it. I can't call deaconess and say, deaconess. You see them people there? And even if you vent, say you vent to somebody, you can't fight back either. You can't hurt them back. And we have a way to try to hurt them more than. Because they must know, say. Our feet, say, me get hurt. I mean, I'm going to eat eye for eye, you know. I'm going to do more than. I'm going to make it hurt bad. And that is why people of this world, when they come in, when they say they have gang warfare and whatever, if you kill one of them, they may come kill two. Or they may kill the family. Their action must be greater than. How are we different from that as people of God when we try to hurt people more than they hurt us? We're better than the gunman? We're worse because we should know better. True forgiveness. And this is something that we struggle with. True forgiveness. Let us let it go today. Let us go to the questions. Number one, why is love important to God? Yes, Deacon Ben, come. Why is love important to God? Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, John 14, 15, 1 John 4, 7 to 10. Go ahead. You can make a comment and then we'll take the scriptures. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Wow. What a topic. Overemphasized, but from today, as the teacher said, let it be a different. It must be in us. Amen? Amen. And as she rightly said, fruits are attractive to others. It is easily seen, I think, when it's genuine. Easily seen. Sometimes you have something you're picking off the tree. And you look this side, and you look that side, and you overlook some. And you say, and when you go back and look again, you say, but I never see this one. It must be seen, but we have to be careful. But I love this line. It says, Christian must recognize in our love being expressed upward to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And outward to others. So we cannot say we love God and we hate our brother. That's right. We are a liar, the Bible says. Amen? Amen. And then I like this line that says, we need God's help to love all the time. 
It is not in our nature to love like God loves. Not in our nature. We need God. That's why the song says, His love is more than tongue can tell. Yeah. We can't understand it. We may say we love, but we can't understand it. It is a mystery. It's amazing. His love is more than tongue can tell. If we look into that, it's amazing. More than tongue can tell. And another line says, action, speak louder than words. We can talk a lot, you know, but action, man. Action, speak louder than words. And I'd like you to elaborate on this verse that is in paragraph one. I'm going to take my seat now and just listen. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. That's the first question that we're going to be looking at now. All right, so let's look, take the question, and then I'll take Deacon um, Gordon. So let's read Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. John 14, 15, 1 John 4, 7 to 10. And we're also going to be looking at that scripture later on. So if, it, if what it is that you, you want to understand is not covered here in question one, we're going to look at it um, later on. Yes, go ahead, Deaconess. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. John 14, 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. 1 John 4, 7 to 10. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his holy begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the appropriation for our sins. Praise the Lord. So why is love important to God? Firstly, love is a part of God's character. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God said, for love is of God and God is love. So it is who he is. It's an important aspect of who he is. And therefore, if we are his children, he expects us to also share this aspect of his character. Now, again, we as parents, we have certain principles that we believe in. And when we have our children, we expect that they behave in a certain way. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we hear that they're doing contrary, or we see them doing, we say, but that's not my child. That is not what I taught you to do. That is not what I have inculcated in you. Because it is important to us that they demonstrate those principles. It is the same thing with God. And we've, we were talking about it when minister came up. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. So if you are from him, of him, then you must demonstrate that characteristic. Praise the name of the Lord. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. So it is an identification feature. If it is that you are of God, his DNA must be in you. Praise the name of the Lord. And a part of that genetic print up is love. Praise the name of the Lord. So, love is one way we can demonstrate to him that we are his. It is a way we can demonstrate to others as well that we belong to him. That we know him so that others can experience his love through us. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Love is important to God because it influences our actions. Note Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 it says, And thou shalt love the God, Lord thy God with all thine heart. So it going to affect your, how you think. The decisions you make. Praise the name of the Lord. It's going to affect your behavior. Praise the name of the Lord. And you're going to love him with enthusiasm. With meaning. Praise the name of the Lord. And if we love him, we're going to keep his commandments. So, that is why love is important to God. Because it has an impact on who we are. And how we behave. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Come, Deacon Gordon. Oh, the presentation. At the end, I'll show the, the PowerPoint. Thank you. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Something running through my mind. Uh, as to fulfill as... How shall I start? Okay. First of all, I must say that I, I agree with everything that you have said. 100%. I agree with 100%. But I know for a fact that you will mean me no good. That I mean you no yes, good? Just, just, just. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. I know for a fact that you mean me no good. I know for a fact that you, 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 you want to see me fail and get rid of me. But as a child of God, I must love you. Yes. I must show you love in every way possible. Yes. If I see you in need, I will help. If I see you in want, I will help. Definitely. But at the same time, I must use wisdom because I know of you course. want me. Don't fall. Yes. I will keep you at arm's length. I'll do I will do everything possible to love you. I will keep you at arm's length. Shouldn't I use wisdom in the way I show my love? Or, or should I... Put it another way. Am I fulfilling the code of a gap in love if I keep you at arm's length because I know that you no mean me no okay. good? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Because that question came up. Yes. Let us praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Um, in Romans 12, verse 8, it states, um, uh, to those that are... Um, Led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 12, verse 8. Right? So then, if someone does me wrong, if someone, yes, does, does me wrong, right? In order for me to treat them in the way that they are to be treated, I must be led by the Spirit of God. Because it is God who knows their heart. It is God who knows their thoughts and their imagination. And based on his knowledge of, how, of who they are and how they would react, then he will lead us and to show us how we must in turn react to them. But we must listen. We must follow as he leads. Where they gone? Yes, thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you very much. Um, so, okay, I've seen multiple hands. Um, the scripture... Isn't, right, I was looking for it, but verse. Okay, it's in Romans 8, not 12. So we'll look for that scripture. Yes, yeah, Sister Cecilia. Romans Cecil. 8, yes, Romans 8, yes. Um, the scripture also, speaking to Deacon God, and the scripture says, how many times shall you forgive your brother? And it says, until 70 times 7. I don't think he's, that is the problem that he's having. I think the problem is that, okay, let me give an example. You have a friend, and say you share a secret with them. And then they go around and spread the secret. 
You forgive them. But wisdom now tells you that I cannot share my secrets with you. Praise the name of the Lord. If it is that you spread discord with the information, I am preventing you from sinning. So I'm not going to share certain information with you. As a matter of fact, I love you enough to prevent you from sinning in that regard. Praise the name of the Lord. All right? If it is that I know that you are a physically abusive person and we are in a relationship, I will forgive you. However, we are not going to abide in the same space. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when you are in my space, you have the tendency to sin and hurt me. So, I will forgive you. If you do need food to eat, if you are in need, I'm going to help you. But we cannot dwell together because your tendency is, your weakness is to be physically, emotionally, um, emotionally abusive. If I know that you have a problem with money, I am not going to lend you my money to get it back. If you're in need and I have the money enough, I'm going to say, here, have it. Or if it is that you are a banker or whatever in partner and the last time I'm going to partner with you, you did not give me my money, it's okay. I'm not going to go and partner with you again. Again, I'm not going to treat you anyway. I'm not going to talk bad things about you. But we cannot be in business together like that. Yeah. I am going to pray for you. I am going to bless you. I'm going to pray that God deliver you from your affliction. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, so, 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 the, so the verse that I quoted is Romans 8 verse, Romans 8 verse, verse 14. Okay. Romans 8 verse 14. Yes. Thank and, you. And, yes. and, and I want to say, I want to say that, that um, in order for us, with regards to the question that... Deacon that, Gordon. Deacon, yeah. So, 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 so the wisdom that will be exercised will not be our wisdom. Definitely. The wisdom that we exercise will be divine wisdom. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, what is the nature of pure love? First Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And this is a scripture that we know, right? We repeat that every wedding. Go ahead. <laughs> but let us look at it deeply, personally now. Go ahead, um, Deaconess. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. All right. So, wonderful people. What is the nature of pure love? So, what are the features? What are the qualities of pure love? And I'm asking technicians, could you put the New Living Translation of that scripture up for me, please? And we're going to take it bit by bit. Look at each word and see if we exhibit or are exhibiting those features all right of love okay while they come up so the first point love is patient and kind patient means not easily frustrated so, in exhibiting love, we're not going to be 
easily frustrated. And we must admit that at times when we're dealing with others, it can be frustrating. But here we are saying that that pure love allows you to go again, to give them another chance. Praise the name of the Lord. So that love can be perfected even in them. The next kind. To be kind means given to or made with heedful anticipation of the needs and happiness of others. So thoughtful, considerate. So if it is with heedful anticipation of the needs, you should be on the alert to look at your brother and sister and see that they need something. Don't let them have to come and ask you. You anticipate the need and try to fill it as best as you can. All right? Not jealous. What does that mean? Or what's the opposite of jealous? Love is trusting. And sometimes when we have been hurt in the past, it's not easy for us to trust. But today... We are being reminded that if we don't exhibit that feature, that love, we need to go back to God and let that love be perfected in us. There's something there. Sometimes we don't love each other because there is some root of bitterness because we have been hurt in the past. And so we need to go to God. Sometimes we need to go to counseling. Because hurt people hurt people. And if you have hurt within you, you're going to hurt others. It's not going to be easy or possible to even love somebody else. So we have to deal with that. If it is that jealousy is being, you, you notice that you're feeling jealous about or towards somebody else. Your love need to fix up. Not boastful. So love is humble and modest. So you're not going to be showing off who you are and what you have. Not proud. Not rude. As people of God, sometimes we are rude. We're serving. Even when we're serving, you know, we're rude. You're not serving cheerfully. Mm, take it. You don't want it. Well, what am I going to do about that? With that attitude, I really don't want it. Rude. Say some distasteful things that should not be coming out of your mouth as a child of God. Love is selfless. So we talked about that. Take sacrifice. Not irritable either. Lord, have mercy. We're not cordial. We're not good-tempered. Again, when we're serving, when we're interacting with people, you want to say, what do them know? Awa. Because at church, we come for, sir, we for praise. What no matter what happened out there, come on, man. You don't have to take it out on me. I don't mean to do nothing. As a matter of fact, I'm not saying you must be hypocritical. You come into the house of the Lord and boy, your spirit down. And Sister June, what happened to you? Boy, Sister Tamara, I really don't even feel like I come to church today, but we just come because, you know, but why are you, why are you taking it out on me? 
Praise the Lord, sister. Love is not irritable. And sometimes you may be having a bad day, but some people seem to be having a bad day every day. All day, every year. And it's okay with them. But it's not okay. You can't be in church. Child of God, every day I'm miserable. Every day, sir? So? No, sir, something wrong with that. You're not tired. Like your heart not feel heavy. We need to get back to God and say, God, take this from me. I can't live like this. Keeps no record of being wrong. Now we talked about that. Forgiving. We talk about forgiveness over and over again. And yet we still hear people. Huh, you're lucky. You don't know what they do me. It does not rejoice about injustice. But rejoices whenever the truth wins over. Some people cannot be happy for you. People of God. May understand the sinner. But we are one body, you know. And something good happened, you can't rejoice. The love of God is not perfected in you. You don't know God yet. When we weep, you're supposed to weep. You're not supposed to say a good fear because she's too happy, man. Mm -hmm. She get crushed now. That is not love. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So love is resilient. Love endures. Despite the up and down, despite the back and forth, despite the hurt, love must prevail. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, so can you help me, um, technician? Could you put up back the scripture for me? Put up back 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And King James Version is fine. So we know that charity is the word here for love. Today, I want us to read the scripture together. But as we read, wherever you see the word charity, we're going to put in your name. All right? And if you have to do it every morning, do it every morning until the love of God is perfected in us. Are we ready? Tamara. Suffereth long. And is, and I am kind. Tamara, envy it not. Tamara, vaunt it not itself or herself. I think no evil. Next. I do not behave myself unseemly. I do not seek my own, I am not easily provoked. I think no evil. Next. I rejoice not in iniquity, but I rejoice in the truth. I bear all things. I believe all things. I hope in all things and I endure all things. Next, Tamara never fails through the blood of Jesus. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall Vanish away. But you see that love inside of me? 
it is going to endure. So let us practice that. In the world now, they have this thing they call um, affirmations that you say in the morning. If you really realize the, the love of God in Amino, there's some aspect that I am lacking in. Let us be intentional. Is the word that's going to be dwell the pollen grain. Developing deep within us to develop this fruit, okay? The word of God, we need to be intentional and allow the word of God to transform us. And if it takes us repeating it over and over until change come, that's what we need to do. Question three. What instructions did Jesus give his disciples regarding love? Matthew 5, 43 to 48. And my time is going, so I'll just take that and I'll summarize. Matthew 5, 43, 48. Yes. We have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That he may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if he love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if he salutes your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. All right. And um, Luke talks about that we should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, strength, and mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And John 13, 34 to, 30, 34 to 35, um, reminds us to love one another as Jesus has loved us. All right? And it is by this that we demonstrate that we are disciples. So, in summary, Jesus commanded the disciples to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. So, the heart is the center of emotion, intellect, moral activities. So, your decision making. The soul. We know that um, in the beginning when God breathed the breath of life into the body of Adam. He became a living soul. So the soul then is who you are, your identity. So love should be demonstrated in who you are. Um, we should love the Lord our God with all our strength. That means with effort, with meaning. Not just superficially. Um, love the Lord thy God with all your mind. So that is the thought system, the faculty of conscious reflection and perception. It is the mind that decisions are made. So in our decision making, we are to keep in mind the love of God. So what it is that we're doing, is it really demonstrating that we love God? All right. The other point, Jesus commanded the disciples to love each other. Brethren and brethren, as Christ loves us, Christ loves us, so he forgave us. Christ loved us and died for us. We are to love our brethren enough to forgive them. We are to love our brethren with a sacrificial love. That means even though we may lose, we may hurt, we may, it may not benefit us in any way, we are required to love in that way. And by doing this, it is a testimony to others that we belong to God, that we are Christ-like. Bless the name of Jesus. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We talk about this all the time. Who is your neighbor? The person who lives over there? Anybody you come in contact with? 
And you're going to love them as you love yourself. You don't want to be, to sp be spoken to in, 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 in any way. You want to be respected. You want to be valued. You want to, someone to be kind to you. So that is the way you must treat people. And the big one is, we are required to love our enemies. And we've talked about this before, but let us remember. So we're not just going to say we love our enemies because it's easy to say. But we are to bless them and curse not. I'm not saying it's easy because the easiest thing for us to come out of our mouth sometime when we get hurt is, God, if I did, I hope say this happened to them. Bless the name of Jesus. Me hope so they feel it like me feel it. We are to bless them. And pray for them. And a bad prayer neither. Good prayer. I remember I heard of a situation where this lady was working in a particular place. And her boss was terrible. And I don't know if this is a good example. But anyway. Terrible. And she kept praying, Lord, make she get promoted. Make she get a better job. Make she get through for go foreign, no God. And get one better opportunity. <laughs> Mind you, the motive was that she would leave her, leave her alone, right? But they get the point. No bad prayer. No prayer to them lose them job. And them something there, right? Love seeks the highest good for others. All right? Okay. So we get it. Those were the instructions to the disciples. And are we disciples of Christ? How are people going to know we're disciples of Christ? By our love. For each other. Right? Actions speak louder than words. So show that you love. Alright? Question four. Discuss why agape love is an act of will and action. And First John 3, 17 to 18, we... That is coming from the, um, that's coming from the, the scripture, right? No, that's not. Okay, you can read that. First John 3, 17 to 18. First John 3, 17 to 18. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children... Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So agape love is an act of will and action. So it is, we have to bend our will to that, the will of God, because it is not natural for us to display this love. Praise the name of the Lord. Our natural tendency is to be selfish, to hurt, to take revenge, right? But agape love is unconcerned with the self and concerned with the greatest good of another. Agape isn't born just out of emotions and feelings and familiarity. So it's not because you feel like you feel good today and you feel happy. I'm, oh, let me just show some love. Let me be kind. Let me con be considerate. It's not because I'm familiar with you because I know you, because you're my friend, or because I, I think you're attractive or something. But from the will and as a choice, agape requires faithfulness, commitment, and sacrifice without expecting anything in return. So based on this scripture, agape love is an act of will and action based on God's example of sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for sinful humanity that deserved to die. It required a decision in the mind of God for him to take his one and only son to come and die for sinner like you and me. In spite of our sinful condition, God's will was that for no man that no man should perish but to have eternal life. It also took sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. So agape love is sacrificial. Then it takes a change in our will to display it. 
It is an act of will even when we don't feel it. We are committed to demonstrate it. Praise the name of the Lord. All right? So if it is a made up mind, a change in our will, it also must be demonstrated in action. So it's not just about what is in your head, but it must be demonstrated. Um, five, why is it important that we love one another? And I think we covered that already. Right? It is a sign, a testament, testimony of our Christianity, our oneness with Christ. It is evidence of our discipleship. So if we love one another, it is a sign that we are Christians. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not about being a member of the church. It's not about per participating in the services. It is about love. Six, how did Paul instruct the saints in Rome to love? Romans 12, 9 to 21. And it's a long scripture. But could you just bring it up? Yes, put it up. And then we're going to go through it. And look at the instructions. So, let love be without dissimulation. What does that mean? Does anybody know what that means? Without dissimulation. Without pretense. Don't pretend. Because it's going to come out that it's pretense. Don't be hypocritical. Last year in Spiritual Awareness Week, Pastor Reed came and he was saying that if you really hate me, don't, don't pretend like you love me. But don't leave it like that. Bring it to God and say, you know, so I really hate that person here. Fix me up. Don't leave it like that. But don't be hypocritical because you know what? I can tell that you're pretending. Especially if you have the spirit of God. We see that you don't really mean it. Because remember, love is action. It's demonstrated. So whatever is in your heart is going to come out. So don't pretend. All right? The next, um, abhor that which is evil. So hate that which is wrong. So don't, you know, don't uphold. Don't foster those things that are wrong. Hold tightly. To what is good. Next. Be kindly affectioned. One to another. With brotherly loving honor. Preferring one another. So love makes you want the best for other people. You want situations to turn out good for people. Alright. And also love each other. Loving, in loving each other it should influence how we serve them, we should be respectful to them as well. All right? It should impact how we work for God. Next um, verse. Not thoughtful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. All right? So we sh it should be demonstrated in how we serve. And we talked about that earlier. If you're serving in ministry, your face is not supposed to make up. You're supposed to do it cheerfully. Because you know what? You're supposed to love people. And so your attitude should be one of love. All right? Be hospitable. Serve with a smile, right? Love should influence you to do the opposite of your natural tendencies. We've said that from before. It allows you to display empathy. So weep when I'm weeping. Rejoice when I'm rejoicing. All right? Don't show preferential or don't display preferential treatment. Love is not partial. All right? So allow yourself to be able to interact with different people at different levels. Because you know what? We're all one. Bless the name of Jesus. We're neither Greek nor Jew nor. All right? So we are one in Christ. So allow yourself to interact with people. Love people at, of all levels. All right? And again, love even your enemies. And the final 
question, what are some other practical ways to show love in our homes, in our church, and our everyday life? Now, in our homes, again, parents, sometimes we have to show what is called tough love, not so? And sometimes we have to restrain or um, curtail certain benefits that our children have because we know it's not good for them or it is, we're trying to inculcate a certain character. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we curtail some of their activities because we want them to be better and do better. In church, I think I mentioned this before, but exercise patience. Extend mercy and forgiveness to all. Sometimes we are really partial and we exercise patience with who we like. But if somebody else do the same thing, we are very quick to mash them up and draw them up and talk to them in a rough way. We are quick to extend mercy to who we like, but not to somebody else, to your friend. We are quick to forgive when we know that we can benefit from somebody in a particular, a particular person. So we don't really want me in them bad books because we're quick to forgive sinner people in our workplace because we have to work with them and them, they are giving us the money. But our brethren, we're not so quick to do that. And in our everyday life, don't render evil for evil. We work with some terrible people sometimes that do us some hurtful things. But we cannot, as a matter of fact, the scripture here says, where is it? That says that um, the scripture we're reading before in Romans, Romans 12. And if you look at verse I missed it again. The one that talks about evil for evil. Right, verse 17. Recompense no man evil for evil, pro pro providing things honest in the sight of men. The New Living Translation says, never pay back evil with more evil. Sometimes when we're faced with certain situations, I would say it earlier. We not just want to hurt them, but we want to hurt them bad, bad, more. But we are encouraged today to overcome evil with good. And we've had that experience at times when somebody really going on bad. And you have the right, you know. You really have the right, and you can tell them some things, you know. But somehow... Something constrain you, restrain you. And you, don't, you either don't answer or you just, okay, yes, answer peace. And because they're not getting the response that they want, them just, are, are, you see you? But when you throw gasoline on a fire, what happens? More fire. <laughs> More fire. Until the whole place burned down. And before you know it, at the end of the day, you say, boy, we've been really gone, buddy. You're shame. But let us allow the Spirit of God to dwell in us. Not just dwell in us, but as He leads, we follow. Praise the name of the Lord. So I pray that from today on, we will really foster the love of God and have its impact on others positively in Jesus' name.